Hi, uh, my name is Vikas Tumar. I'm a professor in the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics. I am a part of a Structures and Materials group here. Uh, we are a group of six uh, uh, faculty and we focus on uh, analyzing uh, issues related to structures and materials uh, and then we teach courses related to that and we address uh, uh, right from uh, aer aircrafts to the UAVs to the spacecrafts and then solve different kinds of problems. So the problems that I focus on is uh, uh, the problems that involve uh, very small uh, objects traveling at really high velocities and uh, that could be uh, small meteors uh, striking satellites or CubeSats in space or two, the small projectiles striking uh, explosives. Uh, so I have currently projects, uh, I mean I've been supported by projects from uh, Air Force, Navy, NSF and a variety of federal agencies as well as industries in this area. So if, you, if I were to summarize my research, it would be basically performing a combination of uh, spectroscopy, uh, which would be Raman and Terahertz spectroscopy experiments at uh, velocities approaching few kilometers per second to analyze failure of materials and uh, to develop the models and then the prognosticate uh, those uh, failure using the different sensing techniques. So we, for example, in our lab are trying to develop a variety of sensors which will learn from these experiments and can be applied in uh, as, as a scenarios where uh, extreme environments are present. For example, the space or radiations or explosion or any other uh, complex scenario. Uh, and we also focus on uh, industrial projects uh, using this knowledge. For example, we are developing advanced uh, battery management systems that will work with uh, exploding batteries and to solve the problems of the batteries uh, which uh, explode just after the impact or other extreme events. Okay, so this is a special piece of equipment. We originally bought it from uh, Micro Materials uh, in United Kingdom. Uh, this is a nano indenter which has a control environment as you can see with the chamber that is, um, uh, it's enclosed in the chamber. So we can do test up to uh, theoretically up to 1000 degrees Celsius and then uh, 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 and then we can, uh, the speciality here is that we, uh, we, we are performing the test, uh, everything else is enclosed in a gas of nitrogen, so oxidation effects are minimized. We perform tests uh, at uh, nanoscale and microscale in this particular chamber. Now what we have done is that we have developed a few technologies in our lab. Uh, for example, we have integrated uh, Raman uh, spectroscopy into it and uh, spatial stages for that as well. And then we have also uh, integrated uh, vector network analyzer to perform a combination of chemical, electrical and thermal measurements along with the mechanical measurements and nanoscale in controlled environments in the setup. So in that sense, it's the only unique uh, setup uh, that is an, av available anywhere in the world. So in terms of application, this particular setup is applicable to, for example, I to, uh, we develop sensors which uh, can actually detect uh, thermal, mechanical or electrical impulses in materials which are failing in extreme environments. So those sensors need calibration and then precise application of the loads at uh, small scales. So we can calibrate those micro scale sensors in this particular setup. And then uh, for that, uh, these specific environments have to be given and uh, this setup enables us to do that. So this is only one of the uh, uh, setup it's of its own kind in the, in the world. And um, our lab uh, holds multiple patents in this area as well. Okay, so this is a terahertz spectroscopy setup uh, that we have in lab. So uh, for example, uh, terahertz uh, are the waves that uh, actually lie somewhere in between the microwaves and milliwaves. And uh, they are uh, much less sensitive uh, or much less damaging to look at uh, in comparison to the X-rays. So terahertz spectroscopy is the new technology right now where we want to be able to see inside things as they are deforming or uh, they are actually exploding for example. So in this particular setup what we want to do is that as the materials are uh, moving for example in the battery electrodes or explosives or uh, uh, the surfaces being impacted at really high velocities up to a few kilometers per second. We want to see what is going on inside those materials. So that's why we use this terahertz spectroscopy here and this is quite new setup. We have developed it in collaboration with a lab in Germany and then uh, uh, this is quite new and then we are really excited about it. And uh, being able to see inside things when they are exploding or moving deformation, uh, moving under deformation at very high velocity allows us to develop new sensors which will be calibrated to this new specific phenomena. So uh, this is quite unique to our lab as well. Okay, so this here is a very special piece of equipment uh, we have designed with, uh, in collaboration with AFRL. 
uh, Air Force Research Lab so, and uh, Army Research Lab. So what we are interested in is that when uh, objects are deforming at really high velocities, uh, when I'm talking about high velocities, it is few kilometers per second. Right now we are approaching three kilometers per second. So what will be the stress the object will experience and what will be happening to the thermal field in this object during that deformation? So we want to be able to uh, actually go inside the objects using imaging and then at the same time being able to measure what kind of stresses they are going to experience. So this is the only setup in the world that can actually do those measurements in a high throughput fashion. And for that what we have done is that we have combined uh, high speed Raman spectroscopy which is calibrated based on our uh, micro material setup that I uh, described earlier. Uh, with um, a high speed uh, impact and then uh, something, uh, a new technology called photon Doppler velocitometry. So these three complicated technologies work together in a single microscope at, uh, in a high throughput fashion. So imagine uh, things being bombarded uh, at a uh, few kilometers per second in a high throughput fashion. And we are able to image that and then measure the strain, strain rate, deformation, stresses and temperature as the, def uh, the loading is going on. Now, uh, coupled with that, uh, those are the, for the smaller objects. Now, we want to be able to do the same thing for the bigger objects. So here is the only machine in the world that can actually measure high rate deformation temperature when the impact events are going on. So this is especially important, for example, in case of explosives, when they are being impacted at uh, very high velocities, what will happen to the individual uh, particles or individual interfaces in those explosives. So, or uh, similarly for the rocket fuels, because we don't, we want to a certain degree of pressure dependent sensitization or desensitization in energetic materials which are in the rocket fuel versus uh, we have uh, competing demands in case of explosives. And the same thing goes with the batteries or any other thing that actually explodes under the pressure. So, for that we need to be able to image that and to measure individual specific points of temperature and pressure when those uh, impact events are going on. So this is the only machine that can measure that uh, with a resolution of 250 nanoseconds at the same time of, uh, uh, at the same time with the spatial resolution of few microns. So uh, people are still trying to develop commercial cameras, but we have this in-lab machine which can actually do that for uh, an engineering specimen that is undergoing such a complex deformation event. Now, uh, all of these that we do are not only experiments, but uh, these are very complex experiments and you can only conduct a few of those in a given amount of time. So we use a combination of technique based on data science and machine learning as well as uh, 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 the computational models to actually build uh, realistic uh, devices such as uh, sensors that I was talking about to actually ex extrapolate this information to the real world. So, uh, so for example, in this case here, uh, uh, this is one example. So we all know that the batteries explode. People design batteries with very good intention, but uh, when they go into the field, they are not really sure what's going on. So we test the batteries in the realistic uh, conditions into the lab when they are being cycled upon. And then uh, we collect this data and then we put, uh, design these new types of sensors which we, have, uh, which we are calling it smart battery management systems. And then we are putting those into the, uh, into the realistic battery packs. So, uh, so once a manufacturer makes a battery pack, they don't want you to open that because of the uh, liability concerns, insurance concerns. So, but we can design these sensors that go on those uh, uh, packs and then can actually predict or predate your failure or explosions and to save lives. So, so this is one example. We are applying the same in case of the nuclear materials. We are applying the same for space meteorites and uh, object detection. And then we are applying the same for the explosives and energetic materials, including rocket fuels.